For what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? I move that the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 3851. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Does the gentleman call up the bill suspended? As amended. As amended. Oh, as amended, Mr. Speaker. Quite right. As amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 3851, a bill to amend the State Department Basic Authorities Act of 1956 to provide for rewards for the arrest or conviction of certain foreign nationals who have committed genocide or war crimes and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from California, Mr. Royce, and the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Boyle, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from California. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five, um, five days to revise and extend their remarks and to include any extraneous material for the record. With, without objection. This measure. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. Mr. Speaker, I, let me just start by thanking the gentlelady from North Carolina, Virginia Fox. She is uh, very engaged on this issue, and also my ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee is as well, Elliot Engel, and they introduced this bill together. And for the last 33 years, the Department of State Rewards Program has authorized the Secretary of State to offer rewards for the arrest or the conviction of certain dangerous individuals. So originally drafted to be used against international terrorists, this successful program has been ex expanded over the years to include um, the use against others who threaten our safety and our security. So this now includes dr drug traffickers, war criminals, perpetrators of genocide, some of those efforts I had authored years ago. But in 2012, um, we expanded it further to transnational organized crime. And at that time, my subcommittee held a hearing where the State Department testified that one captured target, a narco-terrorist, told DE agents, DEA agents that he could no longer trust anyone in his organization after a reward was offered on his head. What he said was, I felt like a hunted man. Exactly. Exactly. That is the rationale behind that program. And that is why we expanded it then with my legislation and why we expand it today with the legislation of Virginia Fox and Elliot Engel. Because our goal here is to turn the table on these dangerous criminals and help ensure that they have no safe haven from justice. And the bill before us today clarifies these authorities, the current statute, authorized rewards for the arrest or conviction of foreign nationals for war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. And many people often think of those things in connection with international tribunals. But the U.S. also has domestic statutes on the books that criminalize war crimes, criminalize genocide. And this bill makes clear that the State Department rewards can be used in connection with the prosecution of foreign nationals in U.S. courts for those crimes as well, to make sure that inducement is there. Tragically, these authorities continue to be necessary. They, we know, continue to be important. So we live in a world where crimes against humanity are perpetrated, and we have seen two declared genocides in as many decades. One Darfur in 2004, I remember seeing firsthand a young boy who had had his hand amputated by the Janjaweed and by ISIS in 2016, and any of us can pick up our iPhone and see the results of that kind of terror. And we also see tragic ethnic cleansing against the Rohingya right now in Burma. So I again want to thank Congresswoman Fox and Mr. Engel for their work on this bill. It deserves our support, and I reserve the balance of my time. General Reserves. The gentleman for Cal uh, from Pennsylvania is recognized. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I uh, rise in support of this bill and yield myself as much time as I may consume. Without objection. I'd like to uh, recognize Congresswoman Virginia Fox and Ranking Member Elliot Engel, along with Congressman Randy Hulkgren and James McGovern, for their work on this bipartisan piece of legislation. The War Crimes Rewards Expansion Act would uh, clarify 
the War Crimes Rewards Program. This program is an important tool for bringing to justice the perpetrators of war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. Under current law, the United States uses the program to pay rewards for the arrest or conviction of foreign nationals who commit some of the most heinous acts. In the past, bounties have helped find fugitives from the former Yugoslavia to Rwanda. The statute providing authorization for this program specifies that rewards can be paid to individuals who furnish information leading to the arrests or convictions for war crimes, crimes against humanity, or genocide, as those terms are defined under the statutes of international tribunals. H.R. 3851 clarifies that the Secretary of State can also choose to pay rewards for arrests and convictions that take place under the laws of the United States as well as other individual countries. Under certain circumstances, prosecutions will have the greatest impact when they take place in domestic courts within the societies in which those crimes occurred. Doing so can help ensure the parties understand the law, witnesses have access to the trials, and public awareness is maximized. The clarification provided in this bill will help build on the program's success, providing the State Department with clear authority to use rewards for a wide range of prosecutions when appropriate. So I urge my colleagues to support this important piece of bipartisan legislation and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman re reserves, the gentleman for California is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield such uh, time as she may consume to the gentlelady from North Carolina, Ms. Virginia Fox, chairwoman of the House Committee on Education and the Workforce, and she is the author of this bill. The gentlelady from North Carolina is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank uh, Chairman Royce very much for his help on this and for yielding time. I am here to speak in support of the War Crimes Rewards Expansion Act introduced by my good friend Elliot Engel and me, and another excellent example today of bipartisanship here in the House. As um, Chairman Royce said, this bill expands and reforms the War Crimes Rewards Program, which provides bounties for perpetrators of the world's worst human rights abusers. The current program authorizes these rewards only for the purposes of prosecutions in international tribunals. While experts can attest to the necessity of international tribunals or mixed court tribunals in limited circumstances, the program fails to offer the same advantages and incentives to prosecutions in national jurisdictions using national courts. There's already broad consensus that prosecuting perpetrators of atrocities like the genocide that plagues religious minorities at the hands of ISIS has the greatest impact when the prosecutions are conducted within the society in which the crimes occurred. When governments can keep these prosecutions within national jurisdictions, witnesses have easier access to courts, public awareness of these brutal atrocities is maximized, and parties will more likely understand domestic laws. Furthermore, domestic trials are often cheaper, quicker, and less resource intensive, meaning more resources can be devoted to items like discovery and analysis. Congress has already attested to the threat that these crimes pose to U.S. interests, including the heavy price tag in the forms of regional instability, refugee flows, economic losses, and reconstruction costs. A related program, the Rewards for Justice program, authorizes similar bounties for terrorists wanted by the United States for violations of United States law, most famously the one that was placed upon Osama bin Laden. The bounties have led to the disruption of terrorist activities, but also the prosecution of terrorists like Ramzi Youssef, who was convicted in the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center. Our bill would bring the War Crimes Rewards Program into conformity with that standard by explicitly listing violations of U.S. law as a basis for issuing the reward, not just the conviction by an international tribunal. It would also allow the U.S. to work with our allies to issue joint rewards, another provision in the terrorism authorization that the human rights provision lacks. 
this bill would leave important safeguards already incorporated into the current program in place. These safeguards include the ineligibility of government officials, consultation with the Attorney General, and congressional notification of the awards. Finally, Mr. Speaker, national governments are sovereign, and the U.S. government shouldn't be neglecting their proper role by offering this tool solely to tribunals. Currently, their efforts to encourage the prosecution of ISIS perpetrators of rape and genocides against Yazidis in national courts using domestic laws that provide for such prosecutions. This bill would make it clear that the U.S. government should also be encouraging such efforts. The genocide by ISIS fighters in the Middle East, war crimes perpetuated by Syria's brutal dictate Bashar al-Assad, and the North Korean regime's crimes against its own people must all be opposed by the United States. It is my hope that the passage of this bill will send the signal that these brutal atrocities and the cowards that perpetuate them will be hunted down and punished with all means possible. I thank my good friend and ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Elliot Engel, for his role as the lead Democrat co-sponsor of this bipartisan legislation. And again, I'd like to thank Chairman Royce for bringing this to the floor. And lastly, I'd like to thank the committee staff for their thoughtful contributions and assistance. And I yield back the balance of my time. General Lady uh, Yields is a gentleman for California Reserve. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I reserve. The gentleman re reserves. The gentleman from California is recognized. No, no further speakers on our side. Okay, the gentleman Mr. reserves. Speaker, I'll the, ge to reserve. the gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. You keep wanting to make me from California, and that, I, that, I don't know. That, that's fine, especially with these uh, these winters. But I'm proud to be from Pennsylvania, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I will yield myself as much time as I may consume for the purpose of closing. Uh, I want to thank uh, again uh, Congresswoman Fox, uh, as well as Ranking Member Engel, uh, for their legislation, as well as the other legislators who, who worked on it. This bill will help ensure that the War Crimes Rewards Program can be used to the greatest possible effect, bringing the perpetrators of war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide to justice. It will give the State Department clear authority to use rewards for perpetrators who are brought to justice under international tribunals in domestic courts. America must stand against human rights abusers and war criminals abroad, and this bill helps advance that goal. I urge my colleagues to support the bill, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from Pennsylvania yields. I recognize the uh, gentleman from California. Will I yield myself such time as I may consume? Show is recognized. Mr. Speaker, when we consider the human cost in terms of those who commit war crimes or crimes against humanity, and I am reflecting on some of the victims of Charles Taylor's activities in Liberia and in Sierra Leone, we saw young children who had had limbs amputated at the hands of the Revolutionary United Front, uh, supported by Charles Taylor. Uh, we have met uh, with children whose parents have been, uh, have been murdered by the perpetrators of violence who believed that they were be beyond justice. And the concept beyond, behind having the Department of State Rewards Program serves such an important purpose when we consider that it has helped bring to the bar of justice around this planet those who have been involved in war crimes. It has turned the table on dangerous foreign terrorists and criminals, and this bill of, of Virginia Fox's and, and Elliot Engel's continues to expand that very effort to help ensure that they face justice, but just as importantly, to send that message that others in the future who contemplate behaving like a Charles Taylor or committing this kind of mayhem will also 
face the bar of justice and encouraging, encouraging those who are working with them to turn them over in order to get that reward and leave them in a state of perpetual anxiety where they know that at any time anyone in their organization could turn them over to international justice. So this bill helps advance that effort. So again, I thank the gentlelady from North Carolina, Virginia Fox, and my good friend from New York as well, Mr. Elliot Engel, for sponsoring this bill to make clear that this important authority includes justice, met it out, meted out by U.S. courts under U.S. law. This makes it clear that the international provisions that we seek to expand include the actions taken here in the United States, and I uh, congratulate them for bringing this bill forward, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill, H.R. 3851, as amended? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative. I, I, I object to the vote on the ground that a quorum is not present, present, Mr. Speaker, and I make a point of order that a quorum is not present. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this motion will be postponed.